as an agency, Amigo was founded by a family in 1971. It was the Stokes family at the time. It became the Stokes Sangrief family. But this one family had a vision for services that included a network of unique programs for people with autism and other intellectual disabilities that included services for children. Our particular family said that some of the children really need residential options too, but wanted to be sure the family was included and the kids weren't separated through institutional care. They also recognized that these young children, as they enter adulthood, would likely need a continuum of services. The first student that ever came to Amigo is Billy Muller, and he came in 1972, and he was 12 years old. And he is still with us, he's in his 60s, doing extremely well. He's living with the same men he's been living with since 1984. It's always been Frank and Bill. My mother and Mrs. Wright were friends, so they just decided that they would be the two best roommates. When I came to Amigo, I was told about the Mansfield mothers. They were Marion Muller, Irvina Belcher, and Thelma Wright. These three moms were a force of nature. They actually went to the legislature and were able to get a line item on the budget that dealt with an Amigo residence. And they made a difference for families that have children with autism. They paved the way. Being a part of deinstitutionalizing our individuals in the 90s, seeing our Neponset Street house open up in Norwood, seeing them come into homes in a community has really been meaningful. My journey with Amigo started about 26 years ago. My son, like so many others, uh, turned 22, and there really wasn't a very good program for his needs, and fortunately, Amigo came along, and sure enough, uh, he was uh, able to go to a group home. Group home was in Norwood. He's currently in Mansfield. He's gone through some difficult periods with self-injurious behavior and also seizures, and uh, they've been terrific. They know exactly how to care for him and provide the right services. I visit usually at least twice, sometimes three times a week, and uh, it's just wonderful to see how dedicated that staff is to him. We chose Amigo because when we learned that it was started by parents that had an adolescent with autism, that hit my heart right there. We'd had experiences in other organizations where Tomo had attended, and a lot of things had happened more revolving around his safety. And for us, when we learned more about Amigo, it was like, wow, this agency wants him to be independent. They want to learn. What does he love? My son Timothy has been with Amigo for 14 and a half years. He started in the children's program, and he's been in the adult program almost nine years now. It's just been so life-changing for me, going from being almost like a prisoner in my house with Timmy because going out in the community was so difficult. When I take him out in the community now, I don't worry about behaviors. Amigo's just been a godsend for my family. If you fast forward to where we are today, what Amigo offers, we have a school for children who are of high need that are placed at Amigo by their local school districts primarily. Some of those kids live in the family home. Some of them live in residential programs run by Amigo. Regardless of where they live, the family is a welcome member of the team to develop programs and services with their loved ones. In our CBDS program, our individuals are exposed to whole person type of programming. We will do some community activities on site. We'll do focus a lot on health and wellness as well as different activities of daily living. In our day program, it's going to be a little bit more of a therapeutic approach. Our members may have access to occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech therapy. There's also a really large component of community involvement. We'll also do things on site for both programs, including yoga, uh, music therapy, and then everybody's favorite is when we have our DJ come once a month. We are very proud of a campus that is being completed now that will house our children's residential programs. That campus 
will be a self-contained environment that has a lot of things to do right there while still having access to the community at large. We also have an adult network. The adult network includes several residential programs, two adult day programs with several different service models operating within those day programs. I'm teaching my individual how to do your laundry, how to clean the table, and if I see them improve in that area, guess what, I am proud, and I'm happy and proud of them. You know, that is my really, really my favorite part when I see my individual improve themselves and become independent. You can physically see the reward of what you're doing. As simple as, you know, someone's child only eating chicken, now all of a sudden they're trying mashed potatoes. Those little things, those little uh, milestones, it's like, okay, we know that what we're doing is working. We also have a division called the Best Clinical Network. Best Clinical works with kids in early intervention services, providing behaviorally analytic services to kids from birth to three. We have children that come and receive individual instruction one-on-one -on -one with an ABA therapist and registered behavior technicians. We offer social skills groups. We offer play groups for our young children ages two to five. We're starting with kids who, some of them don't even have any language, you know. You got a little to teach them to ask for what they want, even what they want to eat. Amigo became an approved specialty service provider in the year 2014. So that allowed us to begin servicing children from birth to age three. The compassion that our staff show every day to people who are of high need is nothing short of heroic. They came in at a time where nobody knew what was going to happen and they worked every day with our folks and then when our folks got sick with COVID, they were there to take care of them because the families couldn't. Our staff, they're funded to make about $16 an hour. That's what our funding brings in. That isn't right in this environment. We need to make sure our staff do better than people at working retail. Our staff give medications. They run complicated behavior plans. They clean, they cook, they advocate for people at medical appointments. It is a very difficult and rewarding job, but we need to make sure that we continue to advocate for our staff. Well, advocating for Amigo is really an easy job because it's not just what Amigo is providing to the clients that it has, it's for all of the parents and guardians that haven't had the opportunity to get that service that may need that service. Me and Karen feel that we can't give enough back to Amigo and that's why we do what we do. I had the pleasure and the honor of meeting and working with Catherine Sangri, our founder. And she was very, very good friends with the Mansfield mothers. And I think now like how one person can make a difference and then down the road, look what we have. We needed those pioneers to come up with that idea of, okay, we need to enrich our family's lives. How can we do that? My mom's vision for Amigo, for Billy. I guess as she got older, she realized that she had peace, that she didn't have to fight anymore for Billy. As a parent of a child with autism, you worry about when the day comes when you're not here. And Timmy being here at Amigo, I know he's in great hands and I know he'll be well taken care of after I'm gone. Happy birthday, Amigo. Congratulations. Congratulations, Amigo. Yeah, Happy birthday, Amigo. No best, how's I am on my life. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary. Happy birthday, Amigo. Congratulations, Amigo, for 50 years of care. And we love you. Happy anniversary, Amigo. High five.